Hello and welcome to the Comlex Instant Review. Please visit comlexflashcards.com for additional podcasts and lectures. Let's talk about systemic mycoses. I want to start with histoplasmosis, which is found mainly in Mississippi and Ohio River valleys, and it causes pneumonia where you'll see macrophages that are filled with histoplasma. These are smaller than RBCs. Also, blastomycosis is another common topic seen on the board exams, and the key words here would be broad, base, bud, and it's found in the Mississippi River and Central America region. It also causes an inflammatory lung disease, um, but this can disseminate into the skin and bone and form granulomas. Coccidiomycosis is found in southwestern United States, California region and it causes pneumonia along with meningitis and its rate typically increases after earthquakes and also the paracoccidiomycosis is another systemic mycosis found in Latin America and here it will have a budding yeast with a captain's wheel formation whereas in coccidiomycosis you may see on the board exam words mentioned such as a spherule filled endospore and these are a little bit larger than the RBCs, um, whereas in histoplasmosis, the macrophage-filled histoplasma were a little bit smaller than the RBCs. Keep in mind that all of these are dimorphic fungi, and the most important thing is to look for the location. So if they mention Mississippi and Ohio River Valley, you're thinking histoplasmosis. If they mention east of Mississippi River, in Central America, it's most likely blastomycosis. And paracoccidiomycosis in rural Latin America and coccidiomycosis in southwestern United States and California. Treatment mainly is fluconazole or ketoconazole for local infection and amphotericin B for any kind of systemic infection. And understand that systemic mycosis can mimic TB, and therefore you see granulomas formed in several of these conditions. Next, we want to talk about Cryptococcus neoformans. Here, the key finding you may see is a vignette that presents with clues about pigeon droppings and Sarbrowd's agar. So, those two are the big uh, things you want to look for. Pigeon droppings and soil typically has Cryptococcus neoformans, which leads to meningitis, and it's a heavily encapsulated yeast, and the culture is done on Sabrowd's agar. It stains with India ink, and the soap bubble lesions are seen in the brain. So those are some of the key things for Cryptococcus. There's narrow-based unequal budding here, unlike blastomycosis, which had broad-based budding. Mucor mycosis and rhizopus species will have a irregular broad non septae hyphae with wide branching angles. So if the board exam talks to you about the actual shape of these fungi, then it can really just help you find the organism. And with mucor and rhizopus, you have a mold that has irregular non septae hyphae branching at wide angles, and the disease is mostly in ketoacidic diabetic patients and leukemic patients and that's another clue that can help you understand uh, patients that present with this condition. It's also seen in frontal lobe abscesses and the fungi proliferate in the walls of the blood vessels causing an infarction. So those are some of the clinical findings of mucor and rhizopus. Now candida albicans, very high yield topic the treatment would be nystatin and superficial infection and amphotericin B for serious systemic infection. What are you going to look for? The key thing is pseudohyphae plus budding yeast. And you can find it in several forms, the oral and esophageal thrush form in neonates, diabetics, AIDS patients, or vulvovaginitis, which has a high pH diabetic patients with the use of antibiotics. Also diaper rash, endocarditis in IV drug users, and disseminated candidiasis all have candida albicans that can present as an opportunistic fungal infection. Finally, I want to conclude this podcast by talking about aspergillus. Aspergillus will present with 45 angle branching septae hyphae, and there is a rare fruiting body that's commonly seen. 
So the mold has septae hyphae that branch at acute angles that are less than 45 degrees. So think of it as an A. A for acute angles in aspergillosis. It's not dimorphic and you'll see the fungus ball appearance. And that's the key finding, the fungal ball appearance. That was a complex and USMLE board review for certain high yield opportunistic infections in microbiology. Please visit complexflashcards.com for additional podcasts and good luck in your preparation for the boards.